Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cupboard, I'm Penge, and welcome to Brewmaster. Now I know it's called Brewmaster, and you might be thinking it's to do with tea, because you do brew tea, and I do like a lovely brew. But no, this is a different type of brew, we're not brewing tea, in this game we're brewing beer. Now I think everyone knows I do like a nice cup of tea, that is fairly common knowledge, I do like a lovely brew. But if I am out drinking something alcoholic, if I'm out with friends, or I'm celebrating something or whatever, then I do like a nice beer. I like beers, I like ales, I like some lagers, not the gassy ones. I find gassy lagers quite hard to drink, but I do like a beer from time to time. And this game is all about brewing beer. We make our own beer. So we choose hops, we ferment yeast, we add flavourings, we bottle the beer. I think we design the labels as well. It's a proper start to finish process about how you make your own beer, which sounds wonderful. And before this game came out, which was a little while ago now, I think it was last year sometime, but before the game came out, the developers sent me something in the post. Something actually arrived at my real house in a big box. And in that box was a can of beer, an actual proper can of real beer. Look at that, how very wonderful indeed. I mean, there were other things in the box as well. There were some beer mats and some corn snacks and things. But yes, also actual real proper beer, which is wonderful. So yeah, natural live beer from the More Beer Company, Brewmaster Beer. Look at that, it's so actually tied to the game. And yes, yeah, so Auroch Digital are the people that publish the game. And of course, I've gone for a nice pun there of Auroch Digital tail because you know it's ale it's beer related so uh, so yeah that's very wonderful that was very kind of them and uh, yes yeah, so I thought Do you know what it's about time we tried it we're going to play some brewmaster let's try the beer they sent with brewmaster I mean that's a fairly unpleasant shot of my arm there but there we go so um so yeah I thought we'd try it out so uh, yeah the top of the can was a little bit battered and bruised it was a little bit kind of out of shape presumably in transit but yeah we got it open eventually and yeah pouring it out it looks nice it looks good it's not too sort of uh, not too foamy on the top there. A little bit of a little bit of uh, sort of a frothy sort of beer head going on there, and then yeah, it looks looks like a nice beer. It looked like a lovely beer. It's a nice sort of golden colour, very nice indeed. And then yeah, I had a bit of a taste of it. Possibly should have thought it were about this when I did the recording of this. Uh, yep, yeah, there's there's the thing in an official geek cupboard drinking receptacle, of course, as you might imagine. But um, but yeah, when I drank the beer. I should have possibly put the can back on the screen, but I didn't. So there's a bit of the kitchen side, but there you go. Thumbs up from the beer. It's really nice. It's a really, really nice beer. It's very sort of clean and crisp and fresh. It wasn't too sort of hoppy or too strong. There we go. Um, so yeah, it was really good. It was a really, really nice beer that they sent me as part of the sort of game promo stuff, which was wonderful. So thank you to the folks over at Auroch Digital. That was very good. And then I realised it wasn't quite centred properly, so I moved it over again. But there we go. So yeah, it's a really nice beer. It's a very lovely beer to drink. But uh, yeah, I think then, with that in mind, now that I've tasted the real beer that was made, maybe we should pop in and play some Brewmaster and see if we can make an equally delicious beer. Welcome, brewer. You're about to take your first steps into the world of home brewing, a world packed with creativity, discovery, and most of all excellent beers. I like the sound of it already. Brewing is an art with endless possibilities, where true mastery can take a lifetime. Yet at its heart it's wonderfully simple. Anyone can pick up a brew pot, throw a few ingredients together, and create a tasty thirst-quenching beer to share with friends and family. So that's exactly what you should do first. Let's get brewing. Okay, right, we can try that. So that letter's from Jeff, because it's signed Jeff at the bottom. And then very helpfully, Jeff has given us a little sort of Polaroid picture of his own face, just so we know who's addressing us in this letter. So there we go. Thank you, Jeff. So we've got to brew a beer using the extract brewing method. Now, just to kind of preface this a bit, I don't know how to brew beer at all. I will gladly drink beer that other people have brewed, but I don't know how to make beer myself. So let's see what the extract brewing method is. What exactly do we do with that? Extract brewing skips the mashing stage used to create fermentable sugars in all grain brewing, instead using malt extracts that already contain these sugars. It's consequently a slightly easier brewing process than all grain brewing and best suited for those new to home brewing. Okay, so we don't do the mashing stage, and instead we use kind of already pre-done fermentable sugars with malt extracts. Okay, I think I get that. Okay, okay, right, so here we go. Let's go and try and do some brewing. So story objectives, brew a beer using the extract brewing method, and tutorial objectives, retrieve the small brew pot from the equipment cupboard. Okay, it's 10.02 a.m. on day one of spring. Let's go and have a little look around. Oh, we've got a very nice place going on. 
That is very lovely. Oh, that was in the, that's the menu. That's the menu screen right there, isn't it? With the lovely kind of fireplace there, the nice log burner type thing. That's very good. A lovely comfy chair. Can we get in the chair? Can we use the chair and have a sit down in front of the fire? It looks very nice. It looks very lovely. And plants. Not one, but two plants. Any more plants? Uh, no, only two plants, but that's okay. That's a good amount of plants. A lovely kind of comfy sort of couch there. Lots of cushions. There's a lot of cushions going on over there. There's a lamp. I mean, it's a lovely room. It's very airy. Look at that. It's got a nice high ceiling going on. That's very nice. Uh, what's that over there? That is the, the furniture cupboard. Okay, right. hang on. Wait a minute, equipment cupboard. I think that's the equipment cupboard because the game is going, hey, come over here, but I found a furniture cupboard. Hang on a second. Um, Hang on, hang on. That looks like plants. Oh, yes. A potted Sansevieria. Okay, I want three of those. We're allowed three of those. Can we have that? Uh, do we have to buy this? Retrieve. Common name for this species includes gin's tongue and snake plant. Okay, that's great. Can I get one out of the cupboard, please? Can I can I have one of those? I don't know how it works. Maybe we can't have one right now because we haven't got any money to buy anything. Um, yeah, I would like to... Okay, right. We can't get that right now, I don't think. I don't think we can buy a new plant, which is a bit of a shame. Let's go into the kitchen. Okay, so that looks nice. Again, it's a lovely airy building we're in. Uh, what's around this corner? Uh, ooh, okay. A little... Oh, this is where the... This is where the beer would sit in kind of big kegs and it would rest, I imagine. Okay, so what's that do? Open the cellar. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, no, I've got into a different thing and I don't know what I'm doing. You don't have any store beers. No, you're absolutely right. Someone needs to tidy up down here, though. Look at that. Uh, right, okay. Come back out the cellar. We're not quite ready for that yet. And there's some beer taps, some tasting taps. Okay, that's very exciting. However, Back, we go into here, into the little sort of kitchen type thing. Uh, we've got some cleaning equipment, got the fridge, and then over here, the equipment cupboard. Okay, so open that up. Okay, so we need to get our things out. So here we go. For example, the equipment cupboard contains tools and containers. Okie doke. To retrieve an item, select the items icon and press the retrieve button. Okay, so we couldn't do that with the plant, but I imagine that's because we're in happy tutorial land. So, okay, so click that and press retrieve. Okay, it's now in slot number one. Okie doke. So fill it with 21 litres of water. Uh, okay, there's the sink. So put that in like that. And then do I not need to take the lid off? Uh, place the brew pot in the sink. Remove the lid. Um, okay, I'm more... Oh, hang on. V is remove lid. It's got a feeling of sort of cooking simulator here. It feels a bit cooking simulator -y. Um And then turn on the tap. Okay, so can we see how much water is going in there? So do that. Oh, hang on, I've turned it off again. So do that. So that is, how much do you need? 21 litres. Good grief. Okay, can we, hang on. Can we, can we turn both taps on? No. Okay, it's just the one tap. We don't like the right hand tap. So um, yeah, 21 litres. Oh, you can use a watch to accelerate time. Okay, so if we press T, um, oh, hang on, hang on. Is spacebar pause? Uh, no, I cannot confirm that spacebar is pause. Uh, I think is V pause? I think V might be pause. That's a bit weird, isn't it, game? Okay, well, do, do you know what? I'm just going to let that... Oh, hang on, is it... Oh, it's a... Ah, okay, I see. Right, so we can... Oh, <laughs> that was a bit quick. That was a bit quick. 21 litres. Yeah, use your mouse wheel to change the speed. Oh, that's quite good. That's quite good. Okay, so hang on, we're gonna to get to 21. So let's get down to, let's get up to about 19 and a bit-ish. Okay, right, so put it on to normal speed. And we're gonna get to 21 liters of water. This is all gonna be fine. Don't worry if you slightly overfill it. Okay, we're gonna try and get it pretty much bang on. So I think about there will do. Okay, no, I've, I've, I tap, tap, I've, I, I can't use the tap anymore. How do I cut? Oh, close watch. I'm in my watch. Okay, we might have slightly overfilled that. <laughs> it's almost a litre more. I'm sure it'll be fine. It said, don't worry if you overfill it. Yeah, I was still looking at my watch, I think. We still have the watch options on at the bottom. Okay, uh, right. Okay, so uh, take it from the sink, being very careful, and put it on the hob. Okay, so pop it into there, and then 
turn it on. Okay, press E to turn it on. And that's kind of it. We don't have to do anything else. We just leave it on. And I assume that's going to very happily sort of start bubbling away at some point at the moment. It's not even at 11 degrees C. That's quite chilly at the minute. Okay, so while that heats up, we can add our first ingredients. Retrieve a can of malt extract from the fridge freezer. Dokey doke. Some ingredients need to be stored cold to maintain their freshness. These are found in the fridge. Yeah, I, I get that. That's how fridges work. I understand that. I'm familiar with the concept of a fridge game. I'm okay with that. Malt extracts are syrupy liquids packed with fermentable sugars that yeast will eventually turn into alcohol during the fermentation stage. They'll also add flavours to your brew. Okay, so retrieve two kilograms of any malt extract. Light or amber? Uh, let's go for amber. Let's make a lovely amber, can I have, you know, a lovely amber beer. That'll be good. So we'll have a bit of that. So it says retrieve two kilograms. How do we... Um, oh, okay. Right, hang on. So we want, yeah, two. Two kilograms, it said. So have that. Okay, so now we're holding that, are we? Uh, and then add it to the pot. Okay, so pour into. Okay. So now we can just... Uh, how do we... Oh, hang on. Right, that and that's the angle. Uh, I kind of feel like we're missing the thing. <laughs> Are we not? Can we not move it over slightly? I feel like we're not quite pouring it into the thing. We're very, very. It's a bit near the edge. Hang on, tip it all the way up. There we go. Look, it's gonna be fine. <laughs> it's almost boiling over. Right. Okay. We have got cleaning stuff. That's okay. Okay. So that's that done. So we can stop pouring that. And I imagine we can just put that on the side. Again, a little bit cooking simulatory. Uh, retrieve a bag of steepable grain from the ingredients cupboard. Oh, there's the ingredients cupboard. Okay, so this is like your dry ingredients. Okay, so these steepable grains are kept in mesh bags so they can be added easily and removed when brewing. They're used in extract brewing to add flavour, body and colour to your beer. So now we need to get 500 grams of one of these. So either... Vienna Crystal or Ultra Pale Crystal? Now, I have no idea. We went for the first one last time, didn't we? We went for the Amber one. That was first. We'll go for Ultra Pale. We'll go for Ultra Pale Amber Beer. So 500 grams. Um, okay. Hang on. We'll go up to 500. There we go. Okay, look. So 500 of that. And clip steepable grains to the brew pot. Um, oh, Oh, so they're in a bag and they kind of hang inside the bag. A little bit like you would do with some tea. Okay, right. So place item. So they're clipped on. So that's not going to steep into the into the water. Yeah, it is like a, an exciting sort of beer tea bag type thing. Okay, so continue heating the brew pot until the water's boiling around 100 degrees C. It's on not that. It's on about 17 and a half degrees C. It's way off from boiling. Um, okay, so we might have to go and do some accelerating of time, possibly, because that's going to take a very long time indeed. I mean, can we turn that up? Can we turn it? I imagine it's on maximum sort of heat anyway. Can't see any flames. Oh, yeah, we go. There we go. I can see flames under it. Um, okay, right. I think we just have to kind of use our watch thing and just speed time on. I mean, it would be perfect if we could go and have a nice sit down by the fire and just wait for that to boil. But, um... But no, I don't think we can use the chair, which is a bit of a shame. Hang on. Now we've done this. Can we go and retrieve our plant? Uh, no. The game is still not letting us retrieve our plant. Boo game. That's a bit mean. Uh, okay, right. So I think then, if we are looking at the temperature, so it's currently coming up to about 20 degrees C, which you know, is, is okay for air temperature. It's quite fresh. But how about then we move time on 100 speed? Okay, it's taking a long time to get this boiling. So yeah, 1022, 1023, 200 speed. Crikey. Okay, I mean, to be fair, it is a very, very big pot of water. It's a huge pot of water. Um, and, you know, it, it's a very small fire under it, I would say. That's not the biggest of flames under it. We could possibly have put it on a slightly bigger burner, but never mind. Right, so we're almost at 100. It's getting there. There's not, there's a little bit less liquid because, of course, it's, you know, evaporating and there's some undissolved something. I don't know what that is. It's taking a long time to boil, this is. Okay, I think it's boiling. It says to get it around about 100. I'm going to make it boil. There's steam coming off of it. There's steam coming off of it. It's almost boiling. Get to 100 degrees C. 
it looks good. Don't boil over. No, 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 no. <laughs> hang on. <laughs> so, um, oh, uh, okay, hang on. Uh, now the water's boiling, time to add another crucial ingredient, hops. That does look very good. In terms of a boiling kind of pan, that looks really good. That's very realistic. Uh, retrieve one bag of bittering hops from in here, I assume. Okay, so oh, hang on, close my watch. Go over to there. So bittering hops. The main two purposes of hops are to add flavour and bitterness to your beers. The amount of bitterness is determined by the alpha acid content, AAC. The higher the AAC, the more bitterness the hops will add. Okay. So, I think, um, yeah, where is it? So, British hops. Oh, hang on. The longer hops are boiled, the more bitterness of flavours I'll add. But flavours begin to boil off after a time, while bitterness continues to climb. This is why bittering hops exist. These are mainly used for bittering and are boiled for longer, while flavour hops are added near the end of the boil. Okay, so retrieve 20 grams of any bittering hops and 50 grams of any British hops. Okay. Um, oh, that one's called Ruggle. Okay, we're gonna to have to have Ruggle. I mean, Polar Down does sound lovely, but that's that's called Ruggle. It sounds like a lovely English village somewhere. <laughs> the little tiny English village of Ruggle. Um, and they've got one pub and a stream and a stone bridge going over it. Okay, so uh, 50 grams of that then, please. So we want 50 grams of that. Okay, thank you. So 50 of that. Um, I assume I can't, oh, hang on. Can I retrieve two lots? And 50 grams, oh no, 20 grams of any bittering hops. Magnus or Marauder. We're going to go for Marauder. That sounds exciting. Um, alpha acid content 17. Well, that's only 14. That's 14 though. That is a little bit less. Um, oh, hang on. I didn't reread really these things. There's things over here, look. Um, hang on. So mild, peppery and spicy, fruity notes. Okay, that sounds okay. And that one says bread to be disease resistant. Bitters cleanly with minimal aroma. Do you know what? Let's go for that one. We'll go for Marauder because it sounds exciting. So 20 grams of that. Okay. So we've now retrieved... Um, I don't know. Is that both? Add the bag of bittering hops to the boiling wort. Okay. So pop that in. Okay. And now we're also holding the other thing as well. I uh, Continue boiling the wort for 50 minutes. Then add the British hops. So add the ruggle. Okay. So now we go back to our watch. And we have to get to about 50 minutes. Okay, so when it's about 10 to 2-ish then, we have to put that back in. Okay, that's fine. So we can just wait a little while. I quite like the um, the time slider thing. That's quite fun. Oh, no, that's a bit too much. Well, hang on. So come out of the watch and then put that in. Okay, continue to boil for 10 minutes. Then remove all the bags and turn off the hob. Okay, so back we go to our watch. So at about 5 past 2-ish... We have to turn that off. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. So it's boiling away. Just make sure I've got the, the mouse wheel going the right way. So about there-ish. Right, so okay, remove all the bags and turn it off. Okay, so close our watch. Remove that. Remove that. And remove that. And then turn that off. Wait until the brew pot small is at a temperature of 21 degrees C or lower. It's vital to cool the wort before adding yeast. So now that kind of mixture there is called wort. I think I was vaguely aware of that, but there we go. So um, it's vital to call it, use the calendar to advance time by a day. Eventually you'll gain access to wort chillers, tools that greatly speed up the cooling process. Um, okay, what does show x-ray mean? It says underneath the thing on the left, G, show x-ray. I'm going to press G. Um, oh, crikey. Okay, right. That is a lot of information that we possibly don't need to know entirely about right now. Um, so that's telling us all about the, whatever the colour settings are and, I don't know, IBU specific gravity. What? Our beer's got its own gravity. Okay, I'm just going to, I'm going to press G. There we go. Back to that. Yeah, I understand that one because it's you know, written in language. I know what it means. Uh, okay, so calendar. So pop over to that for a second. So open that. And, okay, so advance time, an entire day. So now we're on day two of spring, and that should have cooled down. I imagine we went and had a lovely night out. We, I don't know, I sat here and had some tea on the way back or whatever, and just sat by the fireplace and read a lovely book or something. Retrieve the fermentation container from the equipment cupboard. Can we put this stuff down that we're carrying? 
because we're carrying a lot of stuff. There we go. So the fermentation container. Okay, so they can be found in there. Okay, what does that do? It's used in the fermentation stage of brewing when yeast turns sugars into alcohol and CO2. Note the attached airlock. This is so CO2 can escape, preventing any unfortunate container explosions. Oh no. <laughs> right, okay, we have to make sure that we do not cause an unfortunate container explosion. Okay, right, we'll have one of those, please. We'll take one of these and pour the wort into the fermentation container. Oh no, while holding the brew pot, look at the fermentation container. Oh no. Right, so pick that up, look at that, okay, and then press E. So E on the right, so sort of bottom right there, says pour into. Okay, so cannot place as I can tell when the lid is attached. Okay, hang on, take the lid off. <laughs> that would help. Right, so lid off, pick that up, and now pour into. Ah, right, now it's in, it's not in red. Okay, right. That makes sense. And then, uh, yeah, so this is the angle that we're going to pour at. Okay, so just chuck it all in. It's all fine. So in all the wort goes. Keep tippity tippity it in. Okay, wonderful. So now it's in our little sort of storage thingamajig. So do that. We'll pop that down. And do you know what? Put it, put it by the sink because we're going to have to wash up, I imagine. Okay, so there's that thing. Retrieve a packet of yeast from the fridge freezer. Okay, so now go to yeast. Yeast is crucial to the brewing process as it turns fermentable sugars into CO2 and, best of all, alcohol. It will also add its own unique flavours to your beer during this process. Okay, attenuation is a yeast efficiency. How much of the fermentable sugars it will convert into alcohol and CO2? The remainder will become unfermentable sugars. Okay, so a high efficiency means it's going to turn the sugars, more sugar, into alcohol and CO2, and the rest has become sugar that just sits at the bottom of the barrel or whatever. That's where you get that, um, sometimes when you have a beer, like a craft sort of beer or something, at the bottom there is a layer of kind of sediment that you're not supposed to have. So that's the sort of unfermentable sugars and everything else. Okay, uh, for yeast to ferment, the wort must be within its optimal temperature. Outside of this, the yeast will begin to start to hibernate or even die. This is why cooling the wort before adding yeast is vital. Okie dokie. Choose one of the yeasts and add it to your inventory. Um, okay, let's go for, so, SoCal, SoCal Ale I. SoCal, oh, SoCal Ale 1. Okay, um, so that's an American ale. We're going to go for a British ale because that's where I am. 70% attenuation. That's quite good. Ale, um, optimum temperature 16 to 20. And it's malty and sweet. Okay, with Esther and Woody. Okay, what's that one? Crisp and clean. Okay, that was more like the beer that we actually had from the people who made Brewmaster. That was quite crisp and clean. We're going to go for this. We're going to go for a malty one. Go for the British thing. Let's go for a nice malty kind of yeast going on. So we'll have one of those. Okay, and then you just sort of pour it in. Pour it in and then shut the lid. Okay, so pour into... Uh, yeah, just just all of it. Just keep that keep that mouse wheel going, and we'll just tip it all in like that. I don't like how they pour things right near the edge. <laughs> pour it more toward the middle. Okay, so pop that down, and then put the lid back on, and then do something clever to make sure it doesn't explode. Uh, I mean, I feel like we should put that. Have we got a bin? Have we got a bin? I feel like we should tidy up. There's no bin. Oh, yeah, there is. It's over there. It's over there. Right, okay, hang on. We're going to tidy up. Um, yeah, so place that in the bin. That's fine. I'm sure these are going to be... These... Sure, they can't be used again. You can't use those again. Uh, maybe we can. I do not know. Um, okay, that I think is dead. Yeah, that's that's gone. So we'll get rid of that. That's fine. Okay, so what do we have to do now? Use the calendar to wait for 15 days. It's a slow process. Time to use the calendar. Okay, okay. Right, so 15 days. Okay, that's quite a long time. So we're going to go away for 15 days and then come back and see how the beer is. Okay, okay. Right, let's just go and hang around for 15 days, shall we? I might make quite a few cups of tea in that time. Okay, okay there we go. Day 17 of spring. Very good. So a lot of time has passed by. And now how are we looking over here? Retrieve a bag of corn sugar from the ingredients cupboard. Corn sugar. Okay. So what do we do with that? That's going to be something here. Corn sugar. 
used by many large commercial brewers as a cheap and reliably available food for the yeast. Oh, so the yeast has to have a little bit more sugar to kind of work with. It's got to burn some more off. Okay, so grab that and then add 150 grams of corn sugar to the fermentation container. So I guess again, we have to take the lid off. Hang on, so you can do that here. So remove the lid like that and then just sort of, um, yeah, pour that into there. So 150 grams. Okay, hang on. Just a, a little dash. I don't want to do too much. About there. That will do. 142. That's not too bad. So pop that there. Oh, hang on. Oh, hang on. Retrieve a small plastic bar on a tube from the equipment. Cooler. I'm going to put the lid back on in case there's a fly or something. And a fly could land in the beer and ruin it all because you don't want, you know, fly flavoured beer or whatever. So there we go. Just put the lid back on. Retrieve a, a plastic barrel and a tube. Okay conditioning containers if i ever had to do this without the tutorial i would be completely befuddled <laughs> this is very complicated um okay conditioning containers are used in the conditioning stage of brewing where the beer is carbonated okay so that means that's where it gets its kind of slight fizz from so lager would be carbonated more than say an ale or something but okay so grab us a barrel retrieve that and then to transfer your beer to the conditioning container You'll need a tube. Okay. Tubes are used to transfer liquid between containers. I know what a tube is, game. And can also be attached to the sink tab. Gravity plays a key role here. Okay, right. So, uh, the tube doesn't uh, doesn't apply by magic. The, the, the sort of physics will apply here. Okay, that's fine. Right, so retrieve a tube. So now I think, use the tube to transfer your beer to the barrel. So hang on. So one. So put the barrel on the floor. And then, how do we attach? How do we do that? Attach? No, that's a pick. Oh, hang on. Yeah, so now I've got this. So how do we do that? Place the barrel on lower surface than the fermentation container. Connect a tube between the fermentation container's cap. Um, the ca Oh, there, there. There's a thing there. Right, so connect a tube. And then, there's a thing there. Okay. So the tube is now connected. It is going through the thing, through the sort of side there. But that's fine. The game is happy with that. Um, and then open the tap. Okay. So hold is to attach the tube. Okay, so open that tap. And I imagine, do we have to open that? Is that draining? Um, undissolved is going down. But the liquid isn't going down. Hang on, maybe we have to turn that tap on as well. Okay. So now the liquid is moving between here and here. So we're filling up the small plastic barrel. Okay, this is good. If the transfer doesn't work, make sure the tap is open and the condition container is lower than the fermentation container. Yeah, okay, it is. So it's gonna take a while, I think. It's taken a while for the beer to trickle through. Um, do we have to wait for it all to go? Uh, okay, right, get the watch out then. And we just tick time on pretty quickly because that's going to take a good long time. Okay, so I think it's all done. Close the barrel's lid. Um, well, hang on, yeah. Close the tap or the lid? The barrel doesn't have a lid. <laughs> hang on, close our watch. Uh, right, so, uh, yeah, detach the tube. So we want that. So put that down on the side for now. And the tap is shut, I imagine. So close the barrel's lid. Uh, okay, remove lid. Oh, okay, right. So put the lid, put the lid back on and then wait 20 days. Conditioning is another slow process. Leaving the lid on ensures the CO2 is not lost. Oh, I mean, the lid's back on now. It's fine. So there's nothing in there. And uh, okay, we just go and wait another 20 days. <laughs> I want a pint. Someone get me a pint. Also, where's the teapot? Is there a teapot anywhere? We have an entire kitchen set up here. And I can't see a teapot, and I can't see a kettle either. I can't see a kettle. How do I make tea? Where's the tea? The tea must be around somewhere. Hang on, I'm going to go look for the tea. Um, and then, yeah, we'll come back in another 20 days. Good grief, beer brewing takes a long time. And this is the quick one. This avoids the, uh, what was it, the mashing stage? Because we're using the sort of pre-done... Yeah, here's some I made earlier, kind of uh, whatever it was, sugars or something. So this is a quick version, but okay, right, let's go and wait 20 more days. Okay, day 37 of spring now. Very nice indeed. Okay, 
So now it says, taste and package your beer. Time for your hard work to pay off. Bring the barrel to the taps in the tasting room and give your beer a try. Oh yes, okay. I imagine that's quite heavy. How heavy is that? Hang on, put that back down. That's 20 litres, that's quite heavy, but okay, right. So we put that um, there. How does that work? I don't understand. How does this work? How do we do this? We put that there. Um, tasting taps. It's a thing. Do we have to open that up? Do we have to... Oh, E! Taste beer. Okay. Ah, okay, right. So we have a special thing. Ooh! Ooh! Oh, this is fun! Okay, so our colour... Right, so it's not pale. It's a very dark... It's a very dark beer. And it's... Yeah, not too fizzy. It's not too fizzy. Look at that. So that's carbonation is the amount of fizz there is. So it's not flat. It's not completely flat like a kind of a stout or something, like Guinness or whatever. Um, oh, that might not be entirely flat, but that's flatter. And it's not very highly carbonated like a very sort of fizzy lager. Okay, that's fine. Um, it's a small batch size, but that's okay. And the clarity is hazy. Is that good? So it ranges from brilliantly clear to extremely hazy. Okay, so clarity is affected by protein, dissolved ingredients, sugars, and contamination. Okay, so this is only page one of four of our beer profile. Okay, so next up, it's more toward malty and sweet. That's okay, I like that. And got a few points for crisp and clean, nothing for sour and tart. It's not dark and roasted. It's very malty and sweet. Okay, so this beer has a very clear identity with it. It's a malty sweet beer. Um, it's a tiny bit fruity and spicy. A tiny bit tasting like it's off, possibly because yeah, we added too much water, we left it too long, or we burnt it or something. Um, and it's a little bit hoppy and a little bit bitter. And the aroma notes are it's woody, it's got caramel notes, ester. I don't know what ester is. What's that? Uh, mint, earthy, and four more as well. Oh, there we go. Uh, it's got grass, honey, floral, and nutty. Okay. I'd try that. I would absolutely try that if I could. It sounds very nice. Uh, okay, uh, strength-wise, it's 4.26%. Okay, that's okay. And it's relatively bitter. Okay, so it's quite a bitter... It's not a um, sort of a, a session drink. You wouldn't drink a lot of this. You might have one of these because it's quite bitter. So it's not going to... You can just sort of chug it or whatever. It's going to be, you know, a slow, a slow drink, a drink you enjoy in slow time. Um, medium body, gravity... The gravity of a liquid is a measure of its density versus pure water. Original gravity is the gravity of the wort before fermentation occurs. So it was 1.045 and now it's 1.013. I'm, I'm going to assume that's the thing we don't need to worry about. And it's 5.5% contaminated. So what causes that? It can be reduced by good brewing practices, oh dear, such as leaving the lid off when boiling wort so unwanted chemicals can escape. Okay. Right, so now final page, and it's a foreign extra stout, Scottish export, British strong ale, American porter, and American strong ale. So it's more like a, a foreign extra stout. Okay, I suppose it is quite stouty if it's like that. Um, yeah, okay, there we go. Oh, it's got 55.4 IBUs of bitterness. The International Bittering Unit Scale. It's got an official scale. Uh, okay, right, so can we have a sip? The packaging screen is where you can name your finished beer, choose its style, and also design a label for the bottle. Oh, this is amazing. Okay. Okay, right. So at the moment, the beer is called Brewmaster. But uh, no, let's change the name of the beer. Let's think of something else. I think we call it There Is Always Hop. A little bit like There Is Always Hope, of course, but we're missing the E because it's beer and beer's got hops in. So there we go. There Is Always Hop. Um, so yeah, that was the style that the game suggested it's most like. So I think you can pick, but yeah, Foreign Extra Stout. We'll go for that. Um, oh, hang on. Yeah, confirm that, please. Uh, bottle. So that's a Belgian bottle, apparently. Okay. Uh, oh, that's the only one we can have. Oh, that's a bit of a shame. I was kind of hoping we could choose a different bottle. Uh, glass. Uh, oh, the glass we have it from. I mean, it's going to be that, isn't it? It's going to be that. I love those mugs. I've got one of those. Those mugs, those sort of pint glass things. I've got one of those downstairs. I like those. It's got a good chunky handle on it. Yeah, we're having that, please. Um, and the label, edit your... Le oh, hang on. Select a template. <gasps> yes. Okay, okay. Now you're talking. Now you're talking. Oh, look, we can put a big mushroom on it. We can put a mushroom on it. What's that one? 
Um, oh, it's got a bunny on it. Oh, look, we can, we're going for the... What's that? That just looks a bit weird. We go, Hang on, what's that? That's like a Celtic kind of um, symbol type thing. Uh, not so much a fan of that. No, we're going for the bunny. We're going for the bunny. I like that. Illustration. Texture. Um... Oh, hang on. We can ch oh, <laughs> we can change it to anything. We can change it to any of these things. Oh, this is wonderful. Okay, right. Hang on. Um, uh, I mean, what do we go for? Uh, what about? Uh, I'm a, I quite like the bunny on it. To be fair, I do quite like the bunny. But if we can find something that looks a bit, I mean, how about that? How about a big beaker? And then we want to make it slightly smaller because this was an experimental beer. So there is always hop. And it can be a bit experimental. Use gradient. Gradient type. Colour A. Um, okay. Saturate. I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm just pressing buttons and seeing what happens. Um, okay. Shadow position. Shadow width. Of. Oh, nice. Okay. Metallic. Can we make it a metallic-y looking label? Yep, that looks, that looks all right. Can't see much difference. Shine. Can't see much difference on that. Okay, right. So confirm that. Text banner. Okay. So texture is... Oh, that's the thing at the bottom. Okay, yeah. Can we have something big and chunky for that? Yes. Perfect. Okay, yeah. We'll have a bit of that, please. Um, and can we make that Geek Cupboard Corporate yellow, please? Because the background's sort of blue. So if we can have that like a Geek Cupboard sort of yellowy colour, that'd be perfect. A bit like that. That'll do. Yes, I like that. Um, and then, yeah, that needs a shadow as well, I think. So shadow with, I don't know, shadow position, that'll do. I can't really see the shadow on that. Background, edit the background of your label. Texture. It's just a funny sort of shadow. Oh, oh, you can change many things. Oh, okay, right. This is very exciting. Let's go for that because it's sort of cupboardy shaped, if you like. So uh, yeah, merge banner and background. Oh, no, 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 don't like that. No, no, not that. Um, yeah, okay. I quite like that background texture. That one's good because it's sort of geek of a corporate blue. I like that. That's okay. Can we make it very metallic? Uh, oh, yeah. Nice. Shiny. Make it a bit... No, not as rough, actually. Bring that down. This is wonderful. And then beer name text. Oh, we can choose the... <laughs> wow, this is fabulous. Okay, we'll make that a bit bigger. Choose textile. Um, I mean, it's bowed always. Oh, I like that one. Bucad. That's exciting. Yeah, we'll have a bit of that, please. Um, Colour. I mean, we'll make that metallic as well, but you can't really see that too much. Phase. Does that mean? Oh, oh, it makes it wibbly. OK, well, hang on. We'll put it back to regular wibbliness. Choose text. Oh, yeah, we did all that kind of stuff. Right, I think. Choose textile again. Oh, is that for this at the bottom? Oh, OK, right. I'm, yeah, I mean, we could spend all day customising that, but that looks OK. For, hang on. What's that one there? Which is that one? Um, where is that scale? Which one's that? Oh, that's oh, that's uh, yeah. We'll put the strength nice and nice and big because that makes sense. In fact, you know what? That is going to annoy me. Can we move that into the middle ever so slightly? Can we bring that into the middle? Who designed that initially? There we go. That's more sort of centered. Where's this one? Where's that? Because that's not in the right. I don't like that. That's not in the right place. Hang on. So, um, yeah, that's flat. I think. And then do we need to move that up on the Y axis? Yeah, like that. There we go. That's OK. I quite like that. And I think that's it. So confirm that. So we're all done. So return to the workshop. Energy is the key to creativity. And now we've got our own beer. We've got our own little beer. When you're ready, advance the next season. Congratulations on bringing your first beer. Feel free to experiment further. When ready, move to the front door to advance to the next season. OK, look. We've got a bottle of our own drink. This is amazing. Put it down, look. And we can see the label that we just designed. Oh, it turns round as well. That's very good. So we can have a look. Oh, yeah, you can turn it in your hands, look. There it is with its shiny label. And the label actually does shine. It's got a proper kind of metallic kind of sheen to it. And there is the beer. There is, there is always hop. Oh, that's magnificent. We've made a beer, look. <laughs> Yay. Okay. Um... I mean, what do we what do we do with this now? I don't know what we do with that. I kind of feel like we should put it somewhere. I'm going to put it there for now. That's okay. So now, if we go into the cellar, is our beer down there? I assume now it might be down there. And there it is. 
There's our first finished beer. There is always hop, a foreign extra stout. Okay, that's very good. Submit beer? Submit it to what? Oh, I don't know. What does that do? To submit a beer to a job, it must match the requirements. Once a beer is submitted, it'll be lost, but you get to keep a bottle of it for display. Oh no, we haven't got any sort of jobs yet. Yeah, we've not sort of picked up jobs. So, um... Yeah, okay, that's fine. We don't need to worry about that, I don't think. We'll leave the cellar. Because, uh, yeah, this is a sort of a career mode type thing. You can play free play if you like, but I've gone into the tutorial sort of story mode type thing just so we can get a handle as to what we've got to do. Because, yeah, I would have been quite lost at doing any kind of that stuff that we just did without the tutorial sort of helping us along the way a little bit. Okay, let's go to the next season. Let's head into the summer season and see what we can do. So we go there by kind of going to the door. So we sort of leave our little brewing residence behind and we go into there. Um, can we maybe just possibly get us one of these now? Can we get one of those? No, we still can't retrieve one of those. Boo! I want to get a new plant, please, game, but okay, fine. So advance the next season. This one in the current season, you lose any beers you're in the process of brewing, but finished beers, conditioning containers that have been through the packaging process, will be unaffected. Okay, so I think we're fine. I think our beer that we've made, there is still hop, is in that other room, isn't it? On one of these sort of keg holder things. So that's fine. So, okay, now it's summertime. Okay, so does it look different? I imagine, I imagine if it gets to, it looks a bit, it's a bit sort of, oh no, hang on. No, it does look okay. I thought it looked a little bit grey out there. I was going to say, it's like a British summertime. It's like the summertime at the moment that we're having, which is just rain. Um, So yeah, it looks okay. So I wonder if you get to winter, and there's, you know, snow up there and such. I don't know. Uh, pick up the Brewer's Quarterly magazine. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to start by having a read of a magazine. Oh, it's Jeff again. Hello, Jeff. Greetings, Brewer. Do you know what the best thing about brewing beer is? Uh, drinking the beer at the end? People want to drink it. Few folks in the world are more popular than a home brewer. I've sent you a copy of the Brewer's Quarterly, a magazine run by the Community Brew Club, including yours truly. Oh, Jeff, this is a shameless self-promotion, isn't it? Each issue contains a bounty for home brewers, recipes, articles, a catalogue, and last but not least, jobs. Which brings me back to your popularity. A brewer's services are always in demand, and jobs are a great way to earn an income while increasing your brewing mastery. Why not give one a go? Well, Jeff, I've got a few reasons why we should not give one a go, because it will undoubtedly go very wrong. But OK, complete a job is the next challenge. And there is Brewers Quarterly. OK, <laughs> it looks nice. Brewing jobs, dark matter, sensational citrus. Uh, OK, new recipes, American pale ale, which is nice. An American stout. I can't say about too much American stout, but I do like an American pale ale. Um, OK, so... Right, you'll find a new new jobs, recipes and articles in the Brewers Quarterly. They get added to the Journal and Brewpedia, which then subsequently grow as you progress through the game. Okay, there'll be two new jobs each season, each offering rewards, such as beer tokens. Okay, what's a beer to Oh, hang on. Beer tokens. There's a thing up there. Uh, mastery and sometimes special items. You're free to complete one, both or neither. It's up to you. Well, for this part of the tutorial, you need to complete at least one. Okay, doke. Each job comes with its own set of requirements that need to be met by your beer in order to complete the job. They also have an optional bonus requirement that grants extra rewards if met. Oh no. <laughs> right. Which job would we like to do? We have to track a job. I can't read what that one is. So job one of two was the the dark beer or whatever it was. And that sensational citrus. We've made a dark beer. We've made a kind of a stouty beer. Why don't we make a nice sort of uh, a light pale ale type beer? A citrusy kind of, you know, nice sort of crisp, fresh beer. Let's go for that. Let's track that one then, please. Now you have a job in mind. Let's pick a recipe. The recipes tab. Where's the recipes tab? Oh, there. Oh, OK. There'll usually be two new recipes in each issue of Brewers Quarterly, which are automatically added to your collection of recipes in your journal. Each recipe shows the required equipment and ingredients, the steps involved, and the estimated final stats of the beer. Oh, the steps involved. Okay, now this is fine. It tells us what to do. This is good. When doing a job, you usually want to pin a recipe that matches the job requirements. Okay, uh, pin recipes will appear on the hood so you can follow the steps while brewing. That's going to be a lifesaver. Pin a recipe. So, which one do we want? We want uh, American Pale Ale. Yeah. We want this one. So hang on, click on, change the page to see the second recipe. 
How do we change the page? <laughs> oh, there, there, like that. Uh, yeah, we don't want the stout. We want this one. We want the American Pale Ale. So, right, pin that recipe. Okay, so pin recipes like track jobs. Can we change any time? Okie doke. Uh, each issue of the Brewers Quarterly also includes beer-related articles, which are automatically added to the Brewpedia. Great for expanding your brewing knowledge. Okay, so select the catalogue. That's where you can buy the ingredients needed for the pinned recipe. Where's the catalogue? Um, oh, up there. Okay, right. So now we need to pick the catalogue. Okay, so it's where we can buy various bits and bobs as well as cosmetics to decorate your workshop. We can buy the plants. Uh, more items will unlock as you progress, so it's worth visiting every season. Okie doke. The pinned recipes tab, crike, is a useful way of viewing all the items required for your currently pinned recipe. Okay, right, so we can see all the things we need. Okay, including those you already own. And that you don't own can be bought immediately or ran to the shopping cart. When you've purchased all the required ingredients for your recipe, return to the workshop and get brewing. Okay, so we've got all the equipment. We've got the brew pot. We've got that kind of fermentation canister thing. We've got a barrel. We've got that. Okay, so we haven't got the hops, either Troy or Wenatchee. We've got some of that yeast. We've got the other things. Okay, so I think the only thing we have to buy are the hops. Which ones do we need exactly? I don't, I don't know. Which, how do we look at the? How do we look at the recipe? What is um, pinned recipes? Yeah, American Pale Ale. So yes, we need both of these, I assume. So can we buy twenty grams of that? Um, is that what we're buying? Hang on, tick on the. Hang on, can we? I don't know how to uh, buy. Okay, so buy that. And then buy that for 15 things. Okay. So we've bought both of these. Uh, does that mean we've got no... Whatever they are. Beer point. Oh no, beer tokens is down here. What's that up there then? Uh, okay, right. This is fine. Uh, the, the most confusing bit about the whole thing so far is going to the shop. Okay, no, this is fine. Cosmetics. Can we please buy a plant? Um, it's going to be 10. Yeah, do you know what? It's worth it. It's well worth it. Get us a plant, please. Yay, we've got a plant. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, yeah, we've got other things we can buy as well. What's that supposed to be pointing at? Why is that pointing? What are you pointing at there, game? I don't know what that was pointing at. Um, okay, I think then. Are we okay? Unpack your purchased items. You can find the delivery box near the front door. Oh, there. There it is. Open that. Uh, right, first things first. Important thing. Um, yeah, oh, st okay, store all. Okay, so put the things away and then we can go into the equipment cupboard and I imagine, yes, we can retrieve our plant. Oh, this is magnificent. Okay, we've already got one plant in there. Do we have a plant in here? No, we don't. But now, now we do and everything is better. Look, we've got a plant. That's fantastic. Um, okay, I think we're in build mode because the corners of the screen have gone a bit blueprinty. So, uh, okay, right, exit build mode. Um, yeah, exit build mode, there we go. Uh, right, I think, do you know what? Let's give this a go, shall we? Let's have a little go at making some American pale ale without the tutorial holding our hand quite as much. Because, um, yeah, we have got a list on the side there, on the right of what we've got to do. So we'll just, we'll just give it a go. Let's just give it a little go, shall we? And do some home brewing and try to make some American pale ale that isn't completely awful. Okay, so I've done the easy bit. We've got 21.06 litres of water over here in the brew pot. And also I've put it onto the hob as well. But the hob isn't on because if we look at the instructions on the right, it does say number one is get the water into the container, which we've done. But the next step, it says add malt extract and then add the steepable grain and then heat it until it's boiling. So I think last time we were able to kind of get the heat switched on to warm it up a bit, and then we added various bits and bobs, but maybe we do things in a different order this time round. Maybe it doesn't make any difference, I don't know, but they're the instructions on the right. I think we should follow those as best we can. So we've got the water in the container, there it is. So malt extract, so light malt extract, that's what we want. So that is in there, is it? Base malt, right, there we go. So hang on, how much do we need? Two and a half, two and a half kilograms, 2.5 kilograms. Okay, that's way more than we used last time, wasn't it? Light malt extract, retrieve, two and a half kilograms, it said. I'm fairly certain it said 2.5 kilograms. Hang on, I'm going to go and check that. 2.50 kilograms. Um, okay, yeah, so we need to get three kilograms, I think, because we can't get two and a half, weirdly. We can get two or three, so we'll have three. 
and then we just have to pour in <laughs> to pour in the right amount. Okay, this is a bit weird, but okay, right. So pour into, let's pour in two and a half kilograms of this. I don't like how it's not quite in the right place. <laughs> I don't like it. It makes me nervous. Right, so we've poured in one and a half. Just keep it tipped up. Okay, slow it down a bit. Slow it down a bit. And there is about two and a half. Perfect. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, right. Pop that back over there. And then we need... 400 grams of ultra pale crystal steepable grain. Okay, so where's where's the steepable grain? It's not in there. Is it one of these ultra pale crystal? Which one of these? Hang on. Was it one of these? Is it in here possibly? Um, yeah, there we go. Ultra pale. So it was how much? 400 grams worth. Okay, okay this is going to be fine. So retrieve that and we'll have 400 grams. Thank you very much. And then that just kind of clips onto the side. So that goes in like that. So place that and now heat it until it's 100 degrees. Okay, so switch that on. That's now going to start getting a bit warm. But yeah, it's a bit chilly right now. It's not even 18 degrees C in there. It's quite cold. So, um, okay. So how do we then... Oh, I see. We tick these things off. We can press O and P and it kind of ticks things off. Okay, so we've done that one. We've done that one. We've done that one. Next up is... Oh, hang on. I'm turning that around. Next up is the um, yeah heat until it's boiling. And then remove the steepable grain. Okay, right. So we've got to wait a little while because, yeah, that takes ages. Uh, yeah, okay, right. Let's just get our watch out and we'll just run time on until that's boiling hot. Okay, we are nearly there. It's taking quite a long time to get it to proper boiling point. But there we go. 99.99 degrees C... And there we go. Right. Okay. It's boiling. That's good. Right. So go back down to regular speed. So we've done that one. Tick that off. Remove the grain from the brew container. Okay. So now we can take that out. Hang on. Come out of our watch thing. So remove the steepable grain. So that can go away. Don't know what we do with that. Now I'm just going to put it onto the table. Um, okay. So we've done that one. So tick that off. Add hops to the boil for 50 minutes. Okay. So we need the 20 grams of troe. Okay, that one. Okay, so retrieve that. So 20 grams of that. So pop that in. So that clips to the side, doesn't it? So like that for 50 minutes. Okay, we should be okay with that. So it's, yeah, until about just after four o'clock then. That's okay. I like, the time thing is really good. The sort of the time changing thing is really good. So just about after four o'clock. Just run time down a bit slow so we don't miss it. Um, there we go. That's fine. So about there. Right, so now take the hops, um, add hops to boil, oh, oh, hang on, add hops to boil for 10 minutes, Wenatchee. Okay, well, hang on, now we need to get 50 grams of Wenatchee. Okay, <laughs> let's stop looking at our watch. Um, where's that? There. So that was 10 grams of that. Okay, right, so 10 grams of that, clip them onto the side. And then another 10 minutes. Okay, this is fine. So uh, about, what, quarter past four-ish. That's okay. So just tick time on until it's about quarter past four. There we go. Right, so back to regular speed. So we've done that. So both the Troe hops and the Wenatchee hops have been on for the right amount of time. Remove the hops from the brew container. Okay, I can do that. Stop looking at our watch. So take that away and just pop that on the table and take that away. And put that onto the table. Okay, we've done that. And now we need to cool it down to 20 degrees. So turn that off. And then we just have to wait a while. I think we waited a day before, didn't we? So go to the calendar and wait one day. Okay, so now that should be nice and cool. So transfer it to this thing. I don't know if it matters that we didn't clean that out from last time. But okay, so take the lid off from that. So off goes the lid. And then we can pick this up. Um, yeah, so call it to 20 degrees. That's fine. It's on 20 degrees. It's actually on a perfect temperature. Right, and then transfer it to this, please. So pour into, and then we want it all to go into there, I think. So just chuck it all in. It's fine. There we go. Just all of the lovely, lovely wort. In it goes. Okay, so that's that done. Then we can put that over there by the sink so we can wash it up or get somebody else to wash it up. Okay, so that's done. Right. Add yeast. Okay, so now we need 150 grams of the SoCal Ale 1 or SoCal Ale I, which is a bit weird, but okay, right. So we'll have that, and I assume, 
How much is in here then? I don't know how much is in there, but we shall pour... Oh, it's 150 grams, so all of it. Okay, so chuck all of that into there. So in goes all the yeast. Wonderful. Okay, so that's now all in. This is good. Pop that onto the sofa. Do you know what? We're going to tidy up after ourselves. Pop that wrapper into the bin. There we go. Nice being organised. Uh, and then add yeast. Okay, so we've done that. And then ferment for 15 days. Okay, so put the lid back on like that. Lid nice and secure. And then we just leave it for 15 days. Okay, that's fine. That's too long. So 15 days. Day two of summer is going to become, what, day, uh, what's that, 17 of summer, which is fine. That's okay. I imagine we went out and enjoyed the summertime. We frolicked in the meadows and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so we've done that. Add other ingredients to fermentation container. Corn sugar, 170 grams of that stuff, which we've got left over and left open, in fact, from last time. Hopefully that's still okay. So pick that up. Um, right, remove the lid. And then we can, once the lid's off, we can pour that into there. So 150 grams pouring into here from quite high up, to be fair, but okay. So that gives the yeast something to kind of sort of uh, work with, doesn't it? A little bit more sort of oomph. But okay, so we've done that. Um, add other ingredients, the fermentation container. Transfer to conditioning container. Hang on, do we put the lid back on? So reattach the lid. So that's okay. So the lid goes back on. We've added the other ingredient. So I think, was that enough? Did we put the right amount in? Uh, I suspect we put 150 in, not 170. Hang on, hang on. Pick that up. I think we only put 150 in. I think we might need to add a little bit more of this. Hang on a second. So pour into, I think we did 150 and not 170. So we need another 20. Oh, that's way too much. But okay, do you know what? That's fine. It's hungry yeast. That's what we'll go for. It's very, very hungry yeast. Okay, so we've added that thing. Transfer to conditioning container. Okay, here we go. So we need to get ourselves a conditioning container from here, which is just a barrel. Okay, so retrieve the barrel. Thank you. Pop that down there. And then, okay, get the tube. Connect the tube there to the tube there. And now we open that tap and we open that tap and the stuff should be moving from here into here. Okay, so we can tick that off and then we have to wait for 21 days, but let's make sure that it all works first. So it looks like it should be going okay. So get our watch out and just move time on nice and quick. And there we go, it's all gone. There is 0.8 of a litre left. Not quite sure why, but there we go. Never mind. There is a tiny bit left. Why is that? Is that full? That's not full. Um, I don't know why there's 0.8 of a litre left in there. I'm not quite sure, but okay, that's fine. Right, condition for 21 days. Okay, so back we go. Some more summertime to enjoy. Hang on, stop looking at our watch. So let's go and enjoy 21 days of summer. Very nice. We'll just, you know, go on holiday, maybe have a nice break, go paddling in the sea, eat some ice cream. It shall be lovely. Right. So we've done that. 21 days. Package and taste the beer. OK, so pick this up and then we're going to take that into here, if I recall correctly. So that that goes into there. Where did we do? What did we do? Oh, taste beer. That was it. So go to E like that. The beer has failed the tasting test. The batch size of the beer is too small. Adding water to the conditioning container can solve this. Okay. Adding water. Okay. <laughs> what size do... Hang on. What size do we need? Can we figure out what size we need? Uh, the journal is where we see all our recipes and our progress in the story and all that kind of stuff. Um, mastery level. I get zero. None out of anything, I think. Uh, as you complete activities such as jobs, you'll gain beer tokens and increase your mastery. Beer tokens can be used to buy new equipment, ingredients, and decorations. Okie doke. Yes, you sort of told us that before. So, um, yeah, jobs. We're tracking that job. So what do we... What's the problem with this? Why Why was that not... Why was that not good enough? Was that a problem? We're tracking that job. Hang on. Then tracking the recipe, which was that one. American Pale Ale. So 20... Have we boiled it? Did it boil too much? Did we lose too much liquid? I don't know how much we're supposed to have at the end. Taste and package beer. Uh, okay, it said add water, didn't it? 
It said add water. This is going to be fine. Right, pick that up. <laughs> there you did. Right, pop that into the container is too large for the sink. Okay, it said something about taps, didn't it? We can use this. Connect the tube and uh, hang on. Oh, no, hang on a minute. I can't. I can't see where the thing... No, this can... Put that down. Put put it away. Oh, well, no. <laughs> How do I disconnect the tube? I want to put that down. There we go. Right, so pick that up. Rotate it round and put it uh, a bit more like that. So I can see where the thing is. Right, so pick that up. Attach the tube. Attach the tube. Okay, and then open the tap. So that's going to start filling up with water. Okay, because there wasn't enough liquid in there or something. I don't really understand, but okay. So if we fill that up to, I don't know, 18? I feel like this is bad. We're watering down the beer. This is awful. Right, 18 litres. Okay, so disconnect the tube and then pick that back up. Is that enough? <laughs> I don't know if that's enough. I've got no idea. We're just going to give it a go. Taste beer. Ah, okay. Right, so some watered down beer it is, but look, it's got bubbles and everything. Okay, so the colour is quite pale. It's very different to our other one, which was as dark as it could be, pretty much. That's quite nice and pale. Um, it's a small batch size. It's extremely hazy. Okay, so there must be quite a lot of sort of uh, sugars and things in there. That's good, though. And it's yeah, a bit fizzy, not too fizzy, but not flat either. It's more, again, it's more down the sort of malty and sweet route. However, it is very crisp and very clean, which is nice. Uh, quite malty, bit fruity, tiny bits off, and it's a little bit hoppy. And it's got caramel notes, honey notes, it's a bit nutty, grapefruity, citrusy, floral, piney, earthy, and lemony. Okay, citrus is what we want from that, and grapefruit and lemon, that's all good. Um, it's crikey's. It's quite strong. 6.31% is quite strong. It's got medium bitterness. It's full-bodied. Okay. That's good. 8.3% contaminated. Probably the water that I just had to put in there. <laughs> uh, okay, right. This probably isn't the best. An American Amber Ale. Yeah, we'll go for that, please. That seems good. So an American Amber Ale. And all the things are coming through. Yeah, it's quite strong. It's quite strong. It's got 114 on the colour scale. And okay, right. Yes, yeah, so we'll go for an American Amber Ale. Uh, some jobs can require you to brew a certain style of beer. Okay. So I think once you're done packaging your beer, you can submit it to a job or return to the workshop. OK, so we'll try and submit it to the thing. But yeah, an American. Um, yeah, was it was it an amber ale. What did we have to do as part of the job? I can't recall what we had to do as part of the job. It wasn't an IPA, was it? Was it? Oh, no. <laughs> um, I can't remember which one it was. I think it might have been the American Amber. Possibly. Uh, that's the only bottle we can have. Uh, we'll have... Let's have... That doesn't seem right, does it? Uh, that doesn't seem quite right either. Major, what are those? We'll have one of those, I think. That's quite good. Um, and yeah, beer name. Okay, right. So let's give it a name. Let's give it a lovely name. Let's call it I Will Always Love Brew. I quite like that. That's quite fun. And then label-wise... I mean, can we just have what we had last time? In fact, let's pick something completely different. There's a mountain on that one. That's quite fun. We'll have a mountain. So yes, please. Um, illustration. Yeah, we do want the mountain. We like the mountain. The mountain is good. It looks moody. Um, I mean, yeah, we can oh, we can move the thing off the edge, which would look a bit strange. Um, scale wise, it's it's a big mountain. Let's have it hang on. So it's so just slightly, it's like that. But yeah, so it doesn't go over the border a bit. So a bit like that, possibly. Hang on, make it a tiny bit bigger. There we go. So still got the kind of gap around the edge. That looks quite good. Um, don't we use a gradient? I think that's all okay. I think that's okay. But given that we've got the sort of blue background, can we make that a lovely shade of Geek of a Corporate Yellow? Of course we can value. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, perfect. Like that. That'll do for that. Thank you. Um, yeah, that's the illustration, isn't it? So we've done that. Um, Text banner will have maybe, yeah, like, yeah, like Joe, I quite like that. Yes, exactly like it is right now. That's absolutely fine. Um, background, we quite like, but I wouldn't mind it being metally. I quite like the metallic label because that makes it look exciting and also make it very shiny and not rough. Shiny and smooth. Yes, there we go. Perfect. 
Um, and then, yeah, beer name text. Don't want in Dragonstone. I've got some decent fonts in here. What about, what about that one? In a sort of weird... I don't know what that is. It looks like you know, Lord of the Rings medieval style writing kind of thing. Yeah, we'll have a bit of that, please. And can we have that in in black rather than grey? I think black might make it stand out a bit more. So there we go. Do you know what? I'm quite happy with that. That's okay. So confirm that. Confirm that. Submit beer. So we're going to submit this to... Hang on. So if we pick American IPA... Submit beer is also a thing. Okay, I can't recall what we did. We're going to pick Amber Ale because that's what it came up as first, I think. Uh, yeah, okay, so I will always love brew is ready to go away and be assessed. Are the people wanting this beer going to be happy with it? Let's find out. Shall we have pressed submit beer? Um, okay, to submit a beer to a job, it must match the requirements. Oh no, once beer is submitted, it will be lost. Okay, there are several ways to submit beers to jobs. On the job pages in your journal... By interacting with the finished conditioning container and by opening the cellar where you can view your past beers. Okay, so we're here. So I would say, yeah, so that one isn't going to fly. So Dark Matter, the one that, whatever it was. And that's the other mission, isn't it? That's the other one. But yeah, the job now, Sensational Citrus, we can send away. I will always love brew and it's going to be fine. Batch size is small, contains the citrus, no. And the IBU, which I can't remember what that is, but the IBU... <laughs> The, what was that? Bitterness. It's the bitterness number, isn't it? It's at least 20. Okay, so submit that beer, please. And it was done. The organisers of a local food festival are looking for a special beer to celebrate this year's theme of sensational citrus and welcome submissions from quarterly readers. And we did it. We submitted a thing. We got given, oh, a point of mastery, which I'm not entirely sure is deserved, but okay. And we got a new bottle type. Oh, that's what he gets. We've got a new bottle type to choose from. And we got 25 beer tokens as well. Wonderful. Oh, that went well. That was good. Congratulations on completing your first job and finishing the tutorial. What next? That's up to you. You could try out the second job, experiment with the brews, or even decorate your workshop using build mode. Okay, so now we have to go to the next season and the next stage in the story. Okay, good luck, brewer. There we go. Hang on, hang on. Pop that down on the table So and that as well. So we can't go and do the other one then. We can't go and do that job. So we've done one job. That's been completed. So we can't go and do the dark matter job, I assume. Because the season is now over. It's like day 38 of summer. By day 80 of summer, we could have a lovely dark beer done. But uh, yeah, there you go. I think. Hang on. Hang on. Let's just take a quick trip over here. Just a little journey over here to the furniture cupboard, please. What other furniture can we get? Um, rugs. Okay, get some rugs. I'm a bit sad there's only one plant type. Be lovely if we could have another plant type, but unfortunately, no. Oh, we can't even buy another one. Why can't we buy another plant type? I oh, know we've got to, to the shop, haven't we? We have to go to the shop and buy them. I can't recall how you do that exactly. But okay, do you know what? I think that will do for now. We've had a very good look at the game, to see what it's all about and how it works and all that kind of stuff. And it's very good. It's very good. It's got that definite feel of cooking simulator about it. I think that's sort of, you know, an unavoidable comparison because it is quite similar in its sort of mechanics of, yeah, you, know, you sort of click on the items and then you lift things and tilt things and pour things around and heat things up and what have you because you're cooking. You're sort of cooking beer rather than, you know, food or pizza or whatever. You're still cooking stuff. But um, yeah, I think it works very well. I really enjoyed that. It's a lot of fun. I quite like the fact that at the end, you do get to sort of customise things a little bit further because when you're doing the initial sort of cooking thing, like we've seen on the right there, um, it is a little bit sort of, you follow an order, don't you? you follow a sort of a recipe and you add this and you add that and you put it on for that amount of time. And it's not exactly formulaic because you could play around with that if you wanted to. You could add different types of grains or different types of malt extracts or whatever to make things a bit different. But mostly it's sort of relatively kind of standard. But um, yeah, I like the fact that at the end you get to choose things like the bottle and the glass shape and you get to design a label and all that kind of stuff. That's quite fun. I like that. So you do the, all the kind of the cooking stuff. At the end, you do get to sort of you know, personalise it a little bit more with the whole bottle layout as well, which is wonderful. And there are our two bottles that we've made. Look at that. So we made There Was Always Hob 
And I will always love brew, both with Geek of a Corporate Colours on. That one more than the other. But uh, yeah, there we go. We managed to make two beers and we didn't set anything on fire and nothing exploded, which is a great surprise to everybody, I think. But there we go. So while we're on that high, the high of nothing being covered in flames and fire, I think we'll finish things up for now. A huge big thank you goes out to the people at Auroc Digital. I suppose number one for the game key, because without that, we would not be playing this today. But also for the lovely box of goodies with the beer and the snacks and the beer mats. And there was a little kind of patch type thing in there as well, like a sew on patch thing so it was very lovely so thank you very much indeed all rock digital folks that was very very kind of you indeed so yeah thank you so much but yeah we'll wrap things up for now hopefully you have enjoyed this if you have please do leave a like that will be most marvelous indeed and if you're not already then please do subscribe to keep up to date with all the other bits and bobs and nonsense that we get up to in the geek cupboard but for now thank you very much for joining me in the geek cupboard and i will see you next time we'll substitute the chicken broth with how about some beer the showstopper challenge is complete and i think you will agree that is that is an absolute showstopper that's a showstopper and a half the jug is a little bit broken why have you turned up to christmas dinner in a suit and tie okay so put that down no not that no pick it up oh no that's set the kitchen fire <laughs>